Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My face looks a little odd with this uh, because I've got new glasses. So I'm going to minimize my face so that you don't see a lot of it. And uh, this uh, I uploaded the audio book for Air by uh, Sophia Lark and uh, the video was actually the audio book was actually for more than 12 hours and you cannot upload video that are more than 12 hours so I had to cut the epilogue so I thought why not include it like make another video in which I'll read the blurb of the book so that people who don't know uh, can get a gist of like what the book is actually about and then I'll read the epilogue. The blurb goes, I would go anywhere for her, even to Kingmakers, the most brutal college in the world, where Mafia air are trained to control, dominate, infiltrate and kill. I followed Anna because she's my best friend. I al I've always been by, by her side. She needs me to protect her, especially from Dean Yenin, a Broadway heir with a lethal grudge. He plans to take everything from me, starting with Anna. Air is the first book in the epic Dark Mafia series. Uh, it's a forbidden friends to lover romance, which is filled with mystery, romance, and kindle melting bedroom scenes that takes place everywhere except bedrooms. So this is what it is. Now, if you don't know, it's an off-spin series of The Brutal Prince. Uh, series so no not the, the brutal birthright series so uh, if you've read that series you, you, you can give this a try it's about their children and all that uh, now I'll read the epilogue Leo two months later I wake up early in the morning because I can feel that Anna isn't in the bed next to me she snuck into my room after midnight and lay curled up in my arms for hours her breathing's heavy deep and peaceful while our parents have finally accepted that we are in love and intended to be together, they're not quite ready for shared rooms on our joint family vacation. This cabin belongs to Uncle Miko. That of course means it is located in the darkest and loneliest bit of the forest imaginable, tugged up against the mountains. We are on a little spit of land surrounded on three sides by a lake as black and glossy as a mirror and on the other by towering pines. The cabin could be a witch's house with its steepy pitched roof, rough heen logs and continuously smoking chimney. It's large enough to fit both the wilks and branch of gallows quite comfortably. Still, Anna and I can never be completely comfortable when we are apart. That's why she, scrept, she crept into my room every night so she can get the rest she needs asleep on my chest. It's all, it almost makes me dread going back to Kingsmaker. I asked Anna if we should get married instead and start our lives together. She considered for a long time. I want to be married to you, she said at last, her eyes clear fixed on me. I want it desperately, but I also want to be the best wife for you and best partner. The empire we'll build together, it will eclipse anything any more ha anyone has done before, if we finish our education first. I knew she was right, though I hated to admit it. Three more years, I sighed. We'll be there together, Anna said, intertwining her fingers with mine. Now she's wandered off before the sun is up, and I know that means she's troubled. My restless love can never be still when there's something on her mind. I slip out of the bed, pulling a thick sweater over my bare torso and shoving my feet in the battered sneakers. I creep downstairs onto the wraparound porch where I spot Anna sitting on the edge of a moss-covered rock, her bare uh, toes dipping in the lake. She looks pale as a ghost, dressed only in a nightgown with her long sheaf of silver blonde hair likewise trailing in the water. I take the woolen blanket off the porch swing and bring it down to her, wrapping it around her slim shoulder. She tilts her chin up and kisses me, her lips cool against my warm mouth. We go back to school in only a few weeks, she says. Did you change your mind? No, she shakes her head. I just wonder what will happen. What do you mean? What are you afraid of happening? I don't know. She says, gazing out over the black water, blanket with mist. 
I think this year will be different. When we started out at Kingsmaker, it was difficult, but it was new and exciting. I have a feeling things are about to get a whole lot darker. Darker than almost drowning the last week of the school? I laugh. Anna looks at me, sober and serious. Yes. I kiss her again, longer this time. I'll be right by your side, I tell her. I'll always protect you. I know, she says. I'm not afraid of anything when I have you, Leo. We sit side by side with my arm around her until the first morning light burns the mist away and lake turns from black to navy to pink. The sky streaked with orange. The birds make strange and mournful cries across the water. I can smell bacon sizzling in the kitchen, probably my mother wide awake and instantly hungry. By the time Anna and I return to the cake cabin, hand in hand, my mom has pancakes on the skillet, coffee percolating and eggs poaching too. Good morning, Anna says, hugging my mother from behind. She has to reach much farther around than usual to do it because my mom's belly now keeps her arm's length away from the stove. How's baby Francis doing? She doesn't like that upstairs mattress, my mom says, but she's very excited for breakfast. That makes two of us, I say. No breakfast for you until you set the table, my mom tells me sternly. I have to set the table, I say. I am the one who can reach the plates way up here. I lift them down from, the, from their perch on the impractically high shelves above the sink, then pass them to Anna so she can set them out on the table. Once I've grabbed the glasses, I join, join her in arranging the place settings, plate settings. She's leaning away over the table to reach the other side, her nightgown stretched tight across her cute little ass. I can't resist pinching her button. It's the worst possible timing since my father and Uncle Miko have just come strolling into the room. Mikolaj's expression goes from calm to homicidal in an instant. Young love, my dad says cheerfully. Can I get you some orange juice, Miko? And then in an undertone, please don't murder my son. Everybody sit down, my mom says. The pancakes are ready. As we arrange ourselves around the table, Anna and I take Anna and I make sure to take the seats furthest from her father. My mom deposits a huge platter of crispy golden pancakes in the center of the table. Dad brings the bacon and toast a moment later. I can hear Wellen before I see him, thundering down the stairs at full, st full speed. There's a tumbling, banging noise that sounds like he might have fallen down the last four, but he comes sprinting into the kitchen looking perfectly recovered. Where's your sister? Miko asks him. Coming! He pants, plopping himself down on the table and seizing a fistful of bacon. She's got to get all fancy first. Use the tongs. Miko says sharply, wrapping Wellum across the knuckles with them. Right! Wellum says, grabbing another pile of bacon with the tongs. Aunt Nessa floats into the kitchen as gracefully as Anna and barely looking any older than her, even in an old t-shirt and ponytail with no makeup on her face. She gently takes the majority of bacon from Wellum's, dividing it into Miko's and her plate. But I am starving, Wellum complains. Eat that first and we'll see. Kara follows Nessa a moment later, wearing a clean panel shirt and denim shorts, her blonde hair brushed and braided into two plates. She sits down on the other side of Anna, giving her sister's hand a quick squeeze. It's so nice to be all together, my dad says. Maybe not happen, may not happen again for a while once the baby is born. Traveling with an infant is awful. Are you scared to start it all over again? Nessa asks to my mom. No, my mom says, with her usual bluntness, bluntness it's ne it never felt right having only one. It never felt done. I'm sorry, I was so unsatisfying. I tease her. A year or two ago, I would have been annoyed hearing that my mother was unhappy with me as her only child. She probably wouldn't have admitted it, but she can see how happy I am and how little I need that kind of flattery. You'll understand soon, my dad says. The desire to have children with the person you love can be overpowering. Not very soon, though, Uncle Miko says. 
Don't worry, Papa, Anna says. We're not in a rush.